In the last video, we had a look at how we can calculate the total number of open cases over time. For example, if you want to know the active number of subscriptions or the total active employees. Now, after uploading that video, I got a question that went into the direction of how can we calculate the number of open items, but not all of them, but only those items that have been open for a certain time period. For example, if you want to know the subscriptions for one, two or three years or the number of active employees that are with us for over one year. Now in this video, you're going to find out. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if you're new to this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on everything Power BI related. Now, if you have not watched the last video, maybe watch that one first before watching this video. Now, this is the visualization that we have built last time that shows the total number of active employees over time. And we want to take this visual and turn it into this. That's the same visual, which also shows the total number of active employees. However, we have in the legend now total active employees that have been with us for less than one year, then from one to two years, and then one category for more than two years. So let's have a look where we left off last time. So this is the tax calculation that we wrote, where we are calculating the total number of active employees. Now, first of all, we started off with figuring out what is the current date. So the last date in the filter context. For example, if in the filter context we have the year 2019, quarter two, then that last date in that filter context would be the 30th of June 2019. Now the core of this calculation is over here, the number of active employees for which we created a variable. And here we use the calculate function, which allows us to change or modify the filter contents. So first of all, the expression, we just want to know the number of rows, count rows of the employee table, nothing special. And then we get to the filter arguments of the calculate function. Now, first of all, we use the all function to remove the filter context on our date table so that we do not only have the dates for one specific quarter, but basically all of the dates that are in our date table. Now, this is, of course, too much because we only need the ones that are before the last date in our filter context, which we got by using the over here current date variable. So that's what we use in the next argument of our calculate function. We want to have here only those employees that were hired before that current date. Now, up to this point, it's basically just a running total. However, we do not want to include all of the employees because some of the employees might not be active employees anymore. And that's what this part does, okay? This part makes sure that we only include employees whose contract is still active, okay? So we can do that, first of all, by checking if the contract ending date is after that current date or if there's no contract ending date. So now if I want to know how many of those active employees are with us for one year or more, then I can just add another filter argument to my calculate function. Now let's do this. So I'm going to place here a comma, go to the next line, and I'm going to use a function that's called date diff, which returns the number of units between the input of two dates. Okay, so here, we first need the starting date and then the ending date. Now that can be the, the hiring date here. That's the starting date. Then the ending date, that's gonna be the current date. And the interval is gonna be a month or a year. Okay, so here I'm gonna calculate it in months. And this needs to be equal to or higher than 12. All right. So if I place this measure on the table visual together with the total number of active employees, you see that for the first year, 2018, we have nothing over there because there is no employee yet that has a tenure of one year or more. So only here in 2019, you see it starts counting. 
And of course, it is less than the total number of active employees. Okay, so let's go back now to our measure. And the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna limit it to only one year. Okay, so I'm gonna expand it just a little bit further with another end condition. I'm just gonna copy this over. And here we're gonna change the operator sign to less than 24 months. Okay, so let's now take our measure and change this into active employees with one year of tenure. And I'm gonna copy it and use it for my next two measures where I'm gonna calculate the total number of active employees that are with us for longer than two years. And I'm gonna have one measure that calculates the total number of active employees that are with us for less than one year. Okay, so just create another measure. First, create the one for more than two years. Now, over here, we only need the first date diff function. And here we want to check if the employee is with us for uh, more than 24 months or exactly 24 months. And then we need another measure. And here we want to know if the employee is with us for less than a year. So now that we have our measures, let's add them again to our table. And you see here, there is this diagonal line, which makes sense because the first one here checks if the active employees are with us for less than a year. And at the beginning, this corresponds exactly to the total number of active employees. None of the employees left us in that first year. Okay, but then in 2019, this is slowly gonna change as you can see. So here, now we have differences between the total number of active employees and the total of active employees that are with us for less than a year. Because some of those employees are now with us for over a year, okay? So that continues. And then here for total active employees that are with us for more than two years, of course, that is empty for the first two years. And here we only return a value from 2020 onwards. Also here, the sum of these three values is equal to the total number of active employees. 45 plus the 25 plus the seven is 77. So now that we have our measures, we can add them to our column chart, which is a stack column chart. Add some labels to it and that's it. Thank you for watching. If you still have any questions, then post them in the comment section below. And if you liked the video, then consider subscribing. And I hope to see you in the next video.